Hey, how are you doing? Uh, my name is Scott Kidd. Um, I have the pleasure of uh, speaking today with Ryan Watts of uh, Red River Development, and uh, they are in the build to rent space, uh, commonly known as BTR. How are you doing today, Ryan? Hey, I'm great, Scott. Good to be with you. Tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, Red River Development. Yeah, happy to, happy to. So I co-founded Red River Development in uh, March of 2020 alongside two two partners, uh, Jay Dempsey. Jay uh, has an extensive background in senior living, a company called Civitas Senior Living. They've done a lot of ground up development and, uh, you know, at this point have about 38 communities uh, across the country, primarily in Texas, though. Um, and then my other partner, Stephen Watts, um, uh, Stephen is based in Tulsa and, uh, he heads up our Tulsa office there. Uh, Stephen and I also happen to be brothers, you know, in, in 2018, 2019, you know, Jay and I were investing in some of Stephen's, um, uh, multifamily deals in Oklahoma, where we all grew up. We were talking about build a rent as an asset class, talking about, um, you know, the fact that we really believe that that was, a um, going to be a big thing and really something we wanted to invest behind as as we saw a lot of the fundamentals in the housing market. So we, we formed Red River Development to invest in that uh, in that space and, and wanted to wanted to build a business to, to uh, you know, really go all in with BTR. Here we are. Fast forward to today. We've got about 1500 units under management, close to 480 million in AUM. We built a BTR brand called Trulo Homes, uh, T-R-U-L-O. So if you Google that, you'll find our communities. That's that's kind of uh, how we got going. Just so uh, everybody gets an idea, how does a uh, uh, build to rent or BTR differ from uh, your traditional multifamily or uh, single family rentals? Yeah, that's a good question. With our product, we're trying to give our residents the best of both worlds between a suburban rental home and a new built class A multifamily community. So you know, on the multifamily side, we've got um, we've got a large clubhouse, uh, resort style pool. Um, high-end fitness center. Uh, we've got um, green spaces, dog parks. You know, um, there's there's community space for rent. Uh, we have you know on-site maintenance. We have on-site leasing with our Trulo team there. And then each of our homes in our community, oh, they they live like a home. We've got a small private backyard. They're unattached, so our residents you know get out of their vehicle and they're they're walking to their front door. So it really lives like a home. You don't have anybody above you or below you. So with with our communities, that's that's what we're trying to deliver for our Trulo Homes residents is, is to give them the best of both worlds between a, a suburban rental home and you know all the the amenities of a Class A apartment community. Community. That's primary ways that it's different from you know traditional multifamily or what you would hear hear called SFR single family rental, which is which is oftentimes just you know maybe a, a, a rental home in, in a suburban neighborhood that's managed by a mom and pop operator that oftentimes dated and and maybe not terribly updated, and that's how I would compare the two. Okay, so it's it's uh, basically a professionally managed um, newer de new development that uh, will have pretty much all rent all rentals in there and uh that's an interesting concept because it seems they've built a lot of traction over the last few years uh, especially and it seems to be a lot of people don't necessarily want to live in an apartment and, and they're possibly priced out of a uh, you know out of a uh, traditional home buying a traditional home so um that's right yeah just walk us through like a high level what does a btr project uh, look like from start to finish for us you know we're we're taking raw land and you know building a btr community so it, it starts with you know finding the right piece of land and and in the right community uh, a bunch of criteria that we look at as we as we consider a market um, to invest in and then once once we've kind of settled on a market you know we're really looking at key demographic factors things like household growth income growth um, household occupancy median incomes rent to income ratio home values you know school systems number of households in a, in a zip code think things along those lines and there's a few others we're going to look at each site and benchmark that against the national average and and we want to be you know above above the average on those kind of key demographic factors so it starts there with site selection and then from there we're going to you know put a site under contract we're going to have to do uh entitlements um you know so that oftentimes means you know we're having to change the zoning of a piece of land, you know, maybe we're rezoning out land or, or we could be taking a multifamily zone piece of land and, you know, modifying it for this specific use. And then, you know, we're doing all the design uh, with the architecture and engineering to really design the community. And then we engage a third party uh, general contractor 
um, to build the community. And, and we typically have, you know, guaranteed my max price contract with that general contractor. And then we go about building the community, which, which typically takes, you know, around 23 months start to finish. You know, the nice thing is about month 14, um, we've got the first phase of homes delivered. We build this in phases. So you've got a, you know, our clubhouse gets delivered first, and then we've got, you know, call it 10% of the homes uh, that get delivered in that first phase as well, along with our model home. And that that really is what jump starts leasing. We're doing pre, pre-leasing before that. And from there, we're, we're leasing up the community. You know, from an investment standpoint, we're looking to hit stabilization, you know, around six to eight months after we finish construction. And then um, at that point, we'll start making distributions to our investors. Then would continue to manage the community, um, try to grow NOI and, and position it to sell, let's say at the end of year five, uh, to to achieve our return. Okay, so you're you're basically unlike a like a multifamily project where you you build it all at once. Uh, you're kind of doing it in tranches as far as uh, you know in stages, and that way you can develop cash flow throughout the project. Um, that's actually a great concept because then that kind of also helps you out with uh, the way your loan structure and everything else is that you, you start making uh, payments and returning return making returns for the investors. I guess you also have uh, multiple strategies. Is there a possibility you could sell it in uh, in pieces or uh, tranches as well? That's a good question. We've looked at that, and in some cases, we'll con um and set it up that way we, we in fact we did that on our first community that's kind of what i'd call a back pocket option I, I think the real plan would just be to sell it all as one community um because you, you know the, this asset class um there's a there's a large kind of institutional buyer community out there that really loves btr i think if you did sell off part of the community i think it, i think it creates challenges for a buyer like that our plan a is certainly to you know build it lease it up and then sell it to an institutional buyer okay so you you have uh, that's your main exit strategy but condoizing i guess could be in the beginning could be an extra uh, strategy yeah, it, it so there are multiple bad. Kind of a plan B, you know, if something really changed, you yes. know, I I don't foresee that. Yeah, I, w- I would imagine uh, buying the whole community would be ideal for an institutional investor because they they would want that level of uh, product as well. They wouldn't want uh, necessarily pieces or tranches. As we've thought about it, it's, it creates, you know, additional headaches for an owner when you've got some folks that are homeowners in the community and then, you know, partial rentals and, and trying to kind of keep up with common maintenance and all that. So it does create some more logistics challenges so i don't foresee us doing that okay what uh what do you see as the risks of the project and how do you mitigate those risks uh, in a large project like this yeah yeah that's a great question um well first and foremost we've worked with a number of different general contractors you always want to have a guaranteed max price contract with those guys that limits your exposure you know and you can kind of lock in your costs and know know what that total cost is going to be um and then the nice thing is we've we've developed five btr communities already um that are in various phases and so we've you know we worked out a lot of the kinks in terms of just knowing what's important on design and uh, re- really the things to watch for. So I think that experience is, is a big thing that that helps helps mitigate risk. Um, and, and then I just think, you know, having a, a strong team like we do from a construction and project management standpoint, a development standpoint, and then also accounting and finance really help help us execute when it comes down to, uh, you know, building one of these BTR communities. So you guys are a uh- vertically integrated you you have everything in house your construction your management and everything else construction in-house. construction oversight yes you know as i mentioned earlier we use third party general contractors for for building okay. it but um you know the project management team um you know oversees that process and then yes we do have our own property management company which we think is important you know and and are very you know focused on executing you know in a, in a lease up and uh, making sure we're managing our communities in a good way and and really uh, delivering a great experience for our Trula Homes residents. Yes, because it's it's definitely about the the resident experience and the investor experience. You know, without putting it all together and building is one thing. That's one hurdle, but running it that's where the rubber meets the road, and and that that's where you can maximize everything for your residents and your investors. You know. And, yeah. Um. That's exactly right. What do you see the future of built to rent or BTR? Um, over the next, say, five to 10 years? 
I think you're going to see a lot more growth in the BTR sector. I, I think we're in the early innings, very early innings of the built to rent. Um, you know, if, if you look back historically, 2008, 2009, you saw a lot of capital, you know, after the housing crisis, you saw a lot of capital come in to buying scattered site, single family homes, you know, and, mm -hmm. and that started in Phoenix, branched out to a ton of different markets. And you've seen a lot of big companies created out of that. Invitation Homes is an example of a public company that, that was built that way, you know, from a lot of, you know, large influx of equity investment. And then you saw about, you know, call it five, you know, five to 10 years ago, 10 years ago would be the very start of it, where people started to say, okay, well, instead of buying scattered side homes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look to build a whole purpose-built community of rental homes, you know, because, hey, it's easier to manage. I'm not having to drive all over town to multiple different mm -hmm. different homes and so forth. It creates a lot more efficiencies. Um, and, and that's really the space that we love. Um, but look, we still have a big housing shortage in the United States and um, cost of home ownership is, is higher than it's ever been. Um, and so- you look at one of our communities, our average uh, all in rent, and it varies by market, but let's say we're at around $2,000 a month for, for an average unit. Well, I mean, uh, you're getting pretty close to 3000 a month for just principal and interest on, on a median priced home yeah. in the United States. And that's, you're not even talking about maintenance and carrying costs and all the other things, insurance, all the other things you've got to have there. So uh, we think we're a really good value for you know, folks that maybe they're not ready to buy that house yet, and and they but they don't want to live in an apartment anymore. And then on the other end, we've seen a lot of people that are just you know renters by choice that have high incomes, raised a family in, in a community, and they don't want the big house anymore, and they they want more flexibility to to travel. They want to live in something that feels more like a home. So we've seen a lot of those folks in our communities too. Those are some of the people that have really you know loved our our, our Trulo community. So overall, just I see more of that because you know there needs to be more of that product type to fill the housing shortage that we've got. Okay, well as a as an active and passive investor myself, mostly in uh, multifamily, you know I've always uh, this intrigues me with build to rent in that uh, you know with multifamily, you know especially if you're doing a uh, large repositioning or uh, you know a large value add project, you know, it can be a year, possibly a year and a half, two years that uh, you're probably not getting uh, returns for the investors. That's why we've kind of moved away from and gotten into more stable projects. Uh, I think this is a, you know, a kind of unique strategy where in six, you know, six to eight months or so, you're, you're getting some returns for the investors after the land is entitled. So I think this is a future looks pretty, pretty bright for this. So uh, what, markets do you focus on that would attain that about roughly $2,000 a month rent? We've been a first mover or a fast mover in what we think are really strong secondary markets. And uh, that has taken us to our first community was in Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, Oklahoma City, Kansas City, Bentonville, Arkansas, and Indianapolis have all been communities. Uh, you know, those are those are where our, our five Trulo home communities are today. But some of those are fully stabilized, like our community in Tulsa. Others, you know, still under construction. We have a couple of shovel-ready uh, sites that we own. One is in Centerville, Ohio, which is uh, kind of a between Cincinnati and Dayton, um, the great high income sub market okay. in uh, Centerville, Ohio. And then we've got another community in Waco, Texas as well, which is halfway between Austin and Dallas. That's a shovel ready site. So those are some of the places um, where we've where we've built and developed and, and are operating. And then I would mention as well, we have an office in Tulsa and a lot of our, our team property management team is based there. I sit in Dallas. And then we also have a partner in Indianapolis that we kind of cover the upper Midwest with, and they're 50, 50, 50 up there with us. They also build for us in the, in the upper Midwest. So they would be building, building for us currently in Indianapolis and, and then would be as well in Centerville, Ohio. So that's kind of the, the areas we're in and, and a little bit about kind of how we cover um, a, a broad range uh, of, of markets like that. And are you guys planning to expand into a, a, a lot more in the Southeast and in the Midwest and stuff? Because it seems like a lot of those places would be uh, amiable to these price points and stuff, especially in the secondary markets. Yeah, I think there's I think there's a lot of room to expand in some of the markets that we're in already that I mentioned, like Kansas City, like Indianapolis. In fact, we have another site that we own in Kansas City. We love the Bentonville market. We like, we like Ohio. Uh, so I think there's more to be done in a lot of the markets that we're in right now. There's certainly other places we could go as well. We've looked some in the Southeast and, and some in the mountain states, so, but haven't, haven't jumped on it yet. 
trying to kind of stick with what's uh, uh, what we've committed to today. Well, that makes sense because you already have uh, the systems in place in those areas and expanding in those areas is much easier than going to a new market because you're looking at dealing with new cities, new uh, new counties, new states, new regulations. You're right. Yeah. 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 There's always there's always kind of local nuances to each market. You know, it takes it takes time and experience to learn. Well, this has uh, really been very informative and, you know, it's it's something that I've just really learned about over the last couple of years and uh, just in the last, mostly in the last six months that uh, this has become a very hot topic. And I, I see there's a lot of room to growth and uh, there's just a lot of um, benefits to it. And it fills a gap of housing, which we really need to build just about every type of housing um, in all directions for us to hit those marks to where we have enough because uh, yeah. we're we're not co- we're certainly not going to get there the way the way we're we're going. But so this is a fills a unique void. And just one more question, you know, um, how how would uh, people get a hold of you if they wanted to learn more about uh, about build to rent or Red River development? You can find us online <laughs> just at redriverdevelopment.com. Google us. You'll see our website, and uh, uh, you can reach out directly through that site. You'll see some ways to do that on the website. And then also, uh, you know, you can see our communities I mentioned uh, online at truelowhomes.com. So you can find us uh, find us there as well. Okay, that's great. Uh, well, thanks again for, um, you know, taking the time to uh, speak with me about this. I, I think there's just a, a lot to learn about this, and a lot of people want to know more about it. And uh, really appreciate Appreciate you, uh, you know, giving us a, a great background on this. Yeah, no problem, Scott. Happy to do it. Um, it's good to be with you and uh, enjoy the conversation. All right. Thanks. Have a great night. You too.